I was completely surprised to wake up to rain this morning and it uh, turns out I should not have been surprised because the forecast is 100% chance of rain all day. So we're going to install a window today instead of working outside. I didn't put any south facing windows in the cabin, but it's pretty dark in this back room so I kind of changed my mind. I ordered this window um, maybe six months ago and it's just been sitting here taking up room so I'm going to put it in today. Alright so I'm trying to figure out where to put this window and um, I thought about it putting it right in the middle of this back wall but I really want to put uh, a gear area there with a uh, bike mechanic stand that's attached to the wall and kind of mess that up. So what I think I'm going to do is put it right here on this kind of southwest facing wall and then I also don't have to move any electrical and it should give good light to this whole room. So I want the window height to be the same as the door height so I'm just double checking. This should be 83 and a half or 84 I think. Um, looks like it's 82 and a half. So that, that other window, that other door that I measured, it had a header, not a stud. And I would want to measure from like the top of the stud if it was a gable wall. So we're going to make the, the height of our cut 84. And that will line it up after we take an inch and a half away for a top plate. And our, our window is 29 wide by 39 and a quarter. 39 and a quarter plus 4 inches, 43 and a quarter. It's going to come about... metal in there. <laughs> Put a metal blade on this just to get the rest of the way through. Alright, let's see how long we need to make this stud. Seven feet. <laughs> tools. Okay, so again, the outside dimensions of your rough opening, you want it to be four inches bigger. But if you accidentally measure from the inside, you know, you got to account for that, which is something I do a lot by accident, and then I get it wrong. So I'm going to measure this out. It's got to be two inches bigger outside to outside. I'm sorry, four inches bigger. That's good, it fits. <laughs> and I always get comments about this. I am running on solar. I don't have power lines. Every, every time someone sees me using the air compressor, they're, they're like, you're not off grid. I am, I promise. So I just placed this in here and leveled it and we're going to draw a line and and then we're going to take it out and cut it because we don't want to cut we don't want to create a lip here and then you'll you'll see why later. So I'm just going to cut it slightly below my line. this uh, sill in stud here cut and we also have a shim and what we're gonna do is use this shim to give this a little bit of tilt. Alright that's good right there and 
And again, when I said I didn't want to lip here, this is why. Now we use some of this and we make ourselves a nice sill pan. I can find my knife. There it is. Now any water that gets behind your window, which is unlikely because this is covered, but we might as well do it the right way because if I don't, I get a million comments about it. this will be covered by another piece and we'll just use all the different products together carefully avoiding any warranty we may have had this is not sticking probably too old once we foam, once we foam the inside of this, it should compress it up against the wood. Hopefully create a better seal. Shouldn't have to staple it. And I'm not saying this is a bad product. It's probably just been sitting here way too long. I, I think I bought this stuff several years ago. It doesn't have any problems sticking to, to this stuff. Alright, so now we got a nice tilted sill. Any water that gets in here, which is not going to happen because this whole porch is covered, is going to come out and just bleed down here. And I'll have a rain screen so it can go behind it and out down to the bottom. Let's put this little scrap piece here just, just to that too. It's always nice when it's perfectly level. These little things are to protect it. These are uh, these are just roofing nails. Comes with these little sticker tabs for the corners. And this goes up, up under, uh, there we go. I don't know if any water gets behind that. Hopefully it just goes to the top of this as long as it sticks. <laughs> and that, like that. And I guess the uh, latest thing that all the kids are doing is using shims. Oh, well, they're using clips down here. And that's supposed to let any water that gets behind drain out. We don't have any of those fancy clips, but we do have some shims. Now there's a little gap there. Any water gets behind it can come out. It's not going to create an air leak because we're going to foam it from the inside. This kind, To me this kind of seems like where building scientists get a little ahead of themselves, but Alright, now supposedly water can drain out and then we just got to tape this and this. And you know, a lot of people will say that this is all unnecessary because old houses didn't 
have this, but old houses also didn't have insulation in the walls and they were very capable of self-drying and it's a lot harder in a modern house if if water gets where it's not supposed to get it, a lot of times it just doesn't have a way to dry out. So it's better to be safe. All right, so this, this is just left. Any water gets behind here, can get out here. There the sill is tilted, it angles outwards. And then we foam it from the inside. And hopefully we've got a good watertight, airtight window. There we are from the inside. Let's put this hardware on. That was easy. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's this little set screw in here. I can't believe I didn't lose that. That is a miracle. This, look at this thing. Oh, I would have thrown that away in a second. I want to put this so that when it's... Yeah, see I want it to go like this when it's shut. So that should work. Now we'll put this little set screw in. If I can find a screwdriver. This thing. And it's got hardware. Yeah, hope that goes on first. Okay, that's locked. Unlocked. Sweet. nice. Let's put the screen in. I really like these windows a lot. I'm not sponsored or being paid. I paid full retail price for them, but they're really nice. They're Marvin Integrity Wood Ultrex. And I think like if you're going to splurge somewhere on your build, a lot of people just want windows and doors done for as cheap as possible. But they're a really nice way to accent your build. I mean, you're going to pay for it, but they kind of kind of take it that extra step. Just a little foam that, insulate. Now we've got a lot more light in this utility room. All right, so that's the new window. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. It definitely throws a lot of light in that room. And the other place I was thinking about putting it was right here. And I think that would have been nice, but I really want that wall available for, for space for other stuff. So I ended up putting it over here. The other advantage is that it's, uh, it's under an overhang. So, you know, it'll, it won't heat the place up in the afternoon that faces uh, southwest. So it won't heat the place up in the afternoon if any sun hits it because it's under the overhang and um, doesn't intrude too much on the space in here. That is kind of the utility room. And that's kind of stopped raining, so we'll go look at it from the outside. It looks kind of goofy from the outside because I, despite all that blabbing about measuring, I still screwed up the measurements and I put it an inch and a half too high. So let's... I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but you can, if you look at it real close, you can tell. One of the things I did on purpose was try and get cross breeze and cross sunlight from every direction in the cabin so you can kind of see how you can look through this door and look straight back out and same way with the kitchen window and the bedroom windows and stuff. So 